This is Lit Happens, your celebration of the literary arts here in Saskatchewan. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome my guests, David Carpenter and Kellyanne Reese, and they're here to talk about the literary history of Saskatchewan, volume two. David told me that for many years, he was a writer who, for his sins, forced himself to edit the literary history of Saskatchewan, and for Kellyanne's sins, she's been pulled into the vortex of it for this for this installment. Now this is the third volume and I haven't read the other volumes but they they're very interesting for me to 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 look at the whole idea of this. So Dave first off tell me tell me what was the idea that behind collecting these stories to put together. Well uh, I uh, when I was a graduate student I did one course once in uh, Western Canadian literature, and it was, I was amazed at how, how much of it I loved, and uh, and how how Saskatchewan literature differed so uh, radically from uh, Alberta literature, uh, and um, and and then um, I became involved first of all in teaching Canadian literature, and then joined the guild and became a writer, and uh, I I really wanted to get the story out to the rest of the country as well as to our writers here and readers in Saskatchewan that something really happened in this province. Uh, we're famous for our extractive economy, potash and oil and stuff, and we're famous for our huge farms and ranches, uh, and and we're famous for Gordie Howe. But uh, um, whenever I travel, People don't talk about that. Uh, they talk about Brett Butt, who is a writer, um, who who did uh, Corner Gas. They they would ask me, are, are are you folks like that? And I would always say, oh yes, yes we are. <laughs> anyway, it, it seems to me you don't exist as a community if no one has ever written about you, and you acquire an identity once people have. That that fascinates me. And Kellyanne. You you weren't part of the other two volumes. What was it like to come in on this third volume? Um, it was interesting because um, Dave brought me in because he said he needed access to younger writers, I suppose, even though I'm not, well, I mean, I've said young-ish, but I'm not younger. But um, yeah, and so I guess I was aware of who was kind of up and coming or people who had, so I was involved in that. And then um, also... Dave was actually hoping to exit the project, but then he just couldn't. He was just like, I really need to torture myself one more volume. <laughs> so, yeah, so here we are. So so it started out, it might have been like a passing over of yeah. the reins, and then he just... Yeah, it's his so. pride and joy and his passion that he really wants to do this. So I was just there to help him. Uh, just, you know, we came up with the essay topics together, and we, yeah, it's just always surprising, I think, Writers in Saskatchewan are like gophers. They just, you think you've got them all, and then suddenly a few more come out of the ground, and you know, so, we're always so discovering new people. It won't ever be. It'll have to be something that keeps growing and changing. Yeah, and it'll never be complete. Like, actually, it's interesting because this Ted Dyke, who's a writer, I think he's in Moose Jaw and East End now, but he uh, he did two volumes back in the 80s, not literary history of Saskatchewan, but it was called something very similar from the writers of that time, and then now there's this, and then maybe in the future there'll be something else, so. And so how does this volume differ from the other two volumes? I'd, I'd like to talk about the Kelly factor a little Kelly bit factor. more. Um, she not only introduced me to the writing of younger writers that I hadn't read, but um, uh, she also broadened the scope of what kind of writing we would include. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, a wonderful essay by Anne Foster about YA writers, young young adult writers, and, and these are incredibly talented people. Um, uh, th that uh, it would have been a shame not to include them in the anthology. And I think Kelly also knows some some things about um, getting grants, <laughs> filling out forms correctly, <laughs> using computers like an adult. So uh, her impact on the third volume was was considerable, and uh, and I I couldn't have done nearly as full a job without without her. And I guess thinking about that, um, you know, talking about YA writers, often people use that word literary in a more snobby way, and so they don't, you know, that 
don't you don't reach into those genres that are That's very right. you know they're very far-reaching genres they have huge audiences but, but yes. they don't always earn that term literary you know this is a hall of fame of saskatchewan writing and in that sense it is snobby it is elitist uh, people use the word elitist in a lot of ways now you get elite um you get the oil elite you get the frat boy elite i'm thinking of george bush uh, you, you get the old family elite. You get uh, the athletic elite. And Obama was roundly criticized by his uh, uh, detractors because he was an elitist. And he wasn't an elitist because he was a first family guy or a rich guy or something. He was elite because he got an education, he read a lot of books, and he was articulate. Mm -hmm. And uh, and. I see that kind of elitism that is the literary elite that I'm talking about here as raising the bar in a wonderful way. And our, our, our province should be known by the wonderful writers and artists that we've nurtured. So Kellyanne, is there, is there a, a part of this journal that you are most fond of? Are there some stories or, or authors that you're really glad were, were included that may or may not have been? Yeah, like. Going back to the genre, we also covered mystery writers, I believe, and so I, to me, I do think it's important because it is kind of a hall of fame to recognize like we do have really good mystery writers, like Gail Bowen, for instance, or I'm going back to YA, like Art Slade, and they do need to be acknowledged, and I think there is value. I don't know what the academy was like when you were doing your master's degree or the PhD, but for, I guess, my generation of people going through the academy, as elitist of a term as that is, but um, that we were we are more interested in exploring genre and what that adds to the 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 broader canon, I suppose. So I mean, I'm happy that we included some of those writers from the they're not even from the margins, but you know, just maybe from the academic margins. And um, and it's great to also look for younger writers because I find when you're a younger writer, it's hard to find your place, sort of feel like you're a part of the community. And I think some of the younger writers that we've included would probably be thrilled to find out, or when they find out, or if they know that they're included, I think they'll be happy with that, because it's always nice to be acknowledged. So, so it, 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 it isn't a journal that people had, they know that they're in it. It's some, it can be sort of a surprise for people to open up the book and say, hey, I made my, my name is in here. That was our marketing ploy, is that we'll get people to look at the index and then be like, hey, I need to buy this because I'm in it, but, or <laughs> my brother's in it or whatever, right? So, but uh, yeah, no, I think, yeah, it will be a surprise for some people. We didn't, well, some of the essayists did reach out to people, but we didn't reach out to people. And so the the essayists were people that you chose for this project? To, yeah, to we, collect we, the... we uh, conscripted them. I think that's a kind of hard thing to do because um, unlike the early part of this literary history, volumes, say, well, volumes one and two, there didn't seem to be as many essayists available. That, they're hard to find, the ones with a track record. And, and uh, some of the essayists did what we were talking about earlier that Kelly helped me so much with, but some of the essayists looked at some of the older writers who had, a, uh, had made their statement in, in, in a more dramatic way because they'd been at it for longer. Like David Margosius, two, two people wanted to write about him. So one writes about his poetry in volume two and the other writes about his fiction in volume three. And same thing with Lois Simi and Bob Calder. They've got quite a corpus, so the, the essays descend on them with a great lust. Well, thank you so much, Dave, Kelly, for being on the show. It's always a delight to, to talk to both of you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Good to talk with you, too. I'm Danica Lohr, and this is What Happens. You can find past episodes on YouTube. You can find me on Facebook or Instagram, sometimes on Twitter. And if you want to get a hold of me, I'm at danicalohr at gmail.com. Thank you.